Don't swim. Wait. Wow. Can't seem to get around that guy. So that I think that dude's a famous babbit. Didn't really help that, did it? That dude. Not the big dude. This dude. And that's his bus there. The big, all those beads on his head. Can't tell you anything about that. I really can't give you any information. How you doing, sir? It's funny, like, everyone's on holiday, yeah, people drive, like, they're late for work. That, that car nearly went over the edge there, not, I'm not exaggerating. I wish so much I knew what they were talking about. I think there's a limit to your experience. I think walking opens you up the most, it's the deepest way you can travel. Stop me if I'm wrong. But to truly know a place, I think, you have to stay. You have to stay in a, in a community and get to know the place. Travelling through without the language, without the language, you can only, you're only really dipping your toe in. I'm only sampling, you know? <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> Fantastic energy. Hit the road boys. Let's go. Maybe I'm reading into it. Maybe I'm being all hippy dippy. Maybe it is the yatcha, the emotions. Everything I seem to feel, and this is on every journey. It's the extremes. I feel low, it's low. It's intense. When I'm happy, when I'm high, I'm bloody high. In every sense of the word. A happy day on the road though, is a happy day in your life, you remember him. I've got to say, walking in India again, I realised I had forgotten all the bad sides of it, the sides of it I didn't like, let's not say the bad sides, let's just say the sides that I struggled with. I had forgotten that, hey! But that, that's the best bit, just a big cheery wave, anyway. Enough waffling. Let's get walking. I just had a tea. Yeah, yeah. I need to walk with my friends, really. Where are you going? Gangotri. Gangotri? Yeah. On foot? On foot, Yatra. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Have a good day. Lovely energy. Chai already? Fair enough. Camera. Camera, yeah. Camera. 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 Namaste in them. I just get selfies. A juxtaposition. I actually feel 
I feel fit as a fiddle to be honest. It's probably because we're walking pretty slow. We basically stop at every tea stop and smoke a chill em. It's a good way to travel. But I also kind of want to, because I've got the energy, I want to burn it, you know? Let's do it. So again, I'm all tangled up with my camera strap, but to be honest, viewers, I don't know if Gongochi is going to be the end of this walk. It's funny. Now that I can stop, I kind of don't want to. A storm whipped up and we ducked into a temple. Happy to pass Chillums and wait it out. And it was there when buried in blankets with the babas, safe from the roar of the mountain, that I had a moment of presence. Where the hell was I? I looked around at the other faces in the smoke and racket. I was a long way from home. And yet, I had to pinch myself to notice it. Maybe it was the relay of chillums the boys were on, but I was at ease. Ten years of life swinging on a pendulum from home and the road, and I never found a balance in it. The clang of the babas and the wail of the wind only pulled me further into the blankets, into a corner. It wasn't just shelter and company, I found home in hiding. I was anonymous, and a free man. In hell, oh my god, that just that rock just nearly hit me, and that was about three meters away from me. Where that shit, you know, let's get out of here. Oh my god, wow, that woke me up. Shit. I was close. Landed. It's probably like it's very close. That that's too close. It wasn't massive, but it would have definitely killed me if it had hit me. Oh, where did I even come from? I mean, careful, brother. I gotta be really careful walking on these. The guy back there, he's got a hard hat on. Where is he? Literally got a hard hat on. Health and safety. The PPE. It's strange how that, where that rock came from before, because it wasn't vertical up like that. It, was, it wasn't even a big drop, but somehow, no noise at all, it just bang dropped in front of me. That would have been the end of old Bob, I reckon. Years earlier I was in these mountains, similarly lost but happy. 
and I remember getting my first glimpse far in the distance and high above where we sat with the white fangs of the Himalayas and I remember thinking that place up there is not for people we were nothing but ants at the feet of giants and existing for a blink in the eyes of the mountains Now, I don't often regret things from journeys, maybe that's, maybe that's not entirely true, but if I've got to the end of the journey, if everything's worked out and I'm safe, then why would I regret things? Why would I want to change anything? It, it's more a feeling of, of gratitude that it, it worked out. But with this journey, I can't help but feel a regret. Why didn't I listen to myself? There was more river beyond Gongotri and I could feel the pull of it the pull up into those cold mountains and yet I didn't follow it There was something up there for me and I wasn't willing to earn it When I get home after a trip and sit and pick through all this messy footage, I would usually feel nostalgia for the rosy looking miles that have passed. But with this walk, this jaunt from one tea house to another, never have I been so envious of my past self. And sure I'm watching this from a Tuesday in English winter, but what I give to be back there with a bag full of freedom. This car just... Just like drum and bass, just come straight up to me. Perhaps I've been in the comfy and narrow for too long and grown a doubt for the world, forgetting that, at least for a lucky soul like me, the road out of town is always waiting, and that it's not luck but humanity that allows it. The old familiar ache of miles like an old honest mate, that sting is a recognition of my other life. Life out of the flow. And yet, when I'm in my freedom, I question it so much. Why give it all up for dirt and flies and an open sky? All right, welcome to Gangotri. I'm gonna get a hotel and wash these socks. And that's about it, that's all I want to do. Have a biscuit. Maybe Shriya Cottage. It's got a lot of stars. It's a 21 star hotel. Yes, sir. You help me. Again, I'm going to be very white. All right, I've got to say thank you to these boys. 
Thank you, Arvin. Okay. He's really helped me out, this guy. I've had some money stresses. And I'm taking our advice not to go and hire into the mountains. If I was a few years younger, I probably would have done it anyway. Can you see us? I feel like it's very bright. There we go. Thank you, my brother. Okay. Thanks for everything. So these are all the buses. This one's actually not touching the ground, though. That I'm walking past them all. Because I actually... For one, I just despise being on a bus. I need to hitch a bit. I'm just going to see what I find, really. Can I come? Huh? Yeah? Huh? Is it okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. I didn't even put my thumb out. I suppose I'll always wonder what I would have found up in those cold mountains. The meaning of life, maybe. Or my wife, perhaps. You never know. Or next time, would the rock fall and find its mark? I'll have to be alright with not knowing. And that's all part of the journey, too. This footage is so crap that it doesn't deserve to be witnessed. And it most likely would never see the light of day if I didn't think the story was worth telling. Yes, I have excuses, of course. The tripod broke and the scratch on the lens got very worse. But really, the whole half arseness of these clips is fully representative of my lack of pull to the camera. I filmed because I thought I probably should, or out of habit. But I walked because... I walked because I needed a walk. I needed to look inward for a little bit. And to point a camera at that seemed intrusive. To point a camera at Yatra seemed to taint the purity of the journey somehow. It was, as well as other things, a marked difference between me and the Babas. Was I only travelling to talk about it? To paint a strong and impressive picture of my own life? Would I be doing this if no one ever knew about it? Or was I just high? The course of my life has been directed by moments, the impact of which I can only realise in hindsight. Decisions, mistakes, random meetings, or fate, if I believe in it. But these journeys, they don't just end when you reach your destination. You can live on the fumes of these great journeys for years. You think of them often, and memories fade and warp and feelings change. And there's whole other journeys woven in there, all completely their own. See, the story is affected by the mood of the editor, as well as the traveller. And what I feel when making this is... is a yearning to be there. I just want to hit the road, man. So I bought a bike. A bicycle. This is my bike job. He's blue. Yeah, this is my bike John. Um, Adam said you're not going to call your bike Judith as we name everything after our mums, Judith. But I feel like he was a he. And I didn't like the idea of riding my mum. Anyway, John is, is um, I bought John, basically because he's blue, but he needs to be able to cycle thousands and thousands of miles for my next journey, a whopping journey. And this video is two things. It's the end of that video, because I couldn't find an end to the video. Hopefully this is the end of the video. It's also a commitment to this journey a big whopping bike ride. The second commitment is telling my mother, which I'm gonna do now. Maybe I should have waited till my mum's had a wine. Mom? Yeah? Right, 
Right, so you know that I'm going to do what? Got some gonna news. Well, no, what? what? What's happened? I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know I've got that bike for a, a trip. Yeah. I'm going to do a big trip. I know you are. I'm going to... What? What? I'm, what? Oh, I'm going to... What? I'm going to cycle around the world. Is that okay? No.